flying off the ceiling, taken by this feeling. Baby, we're invincible. Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Rebuilding and Not Counting. As always, if you're enjoying the save, drop a like on the video. That'd be amazing. Today, I thought we'd start on Darius Santana. You'll notice that he's got a calf strain now. I do not know what is going on. He's not an injury-prone player. There's nothing like that. Uh, I have got a couple that might be slightly injury-prone. He is not one of them. Um, he came back for one game, and he didn't get injured in that game. Uh, he was actually fine. Got fully back to fitness, nursed him into the game, and then in training this week, he gets a calf strain, so he's going to miss even more time. Ah, oh dear, I don't know. We've really been smashed with injuries this season, and it has cost us so dearly. Because also, you're going to see this in a minute, Alberto now out as well. He might well be back for today's game, I think, but he's missed all of the games off camera, I think. And I don't know. We really, I mean, that's my fault for not getting another left back in. But we did try. I just figured we could at least get to Christmas since he's not super injury prone. But unfortunately, that has come back to bite us in the ass as well. But either way, we're going to come into today's game. Things are a little bit different uh, because we got through the cup against Coventry, which you're going to see anyway. You would have expected that, which means that we've actually got a Carabao Cup game as a second live comp today. So we're going to do a bit of a fun one because we've actually lost all the live comps we've played this season. And I want to show you guys a couple of victories, hopefully anyway. So we've got West Ham at home today, which is nailed on, hopefully a victory for us. And then we've got Bristol City in the League Cup with a chance to get to the quarterfinals of the League Cup. We've yet to play a Premier League team in it. I think we've got a good shot at maybe some League Cup runs this year because I really do want to take the cup seriously uh, as that that might be a good shot of us getting back into the Europa League at least. Fresh off the back of that horrendous defeat to Spurs, we went out with a rotated side, pretty rotated, a few of the defenders remain the same, away at Coventry City. Uh, good performances, to be honest. Uh, uh, not the Celso. Celso scored himself a goal, which was very nice, and Pepo had a wonderful game, provided the assist for that one, obviously. Uh, Darren Lever then also scored himself a nice goal, which was good to see him actually just grab a goal. He's been a bit patchy this year. I've been using him as an inside forward when he plays, just to see if we can get more out of him that way. Um, but unfortunately, Alberto, I think this was the last game he played for us before a try training injury and then Gael Perio grabbed us the third one but again really solid lots of chances uh controlled the ball not quite as much this time but at one point it was up to pretty high but very very comfortable away performance admittedly it's against Coventry City but it shows that the strategy overall worked I think we created eight chances in this game which is good we were then able to sort of parlay that into a good home win against Crystal Palace. And it was really nice to see Jose Lelson Guerra, the son of war, finally sort of wake up. That's the one thing that I'm going to say is a real positive in our off-camera games, is that Guerra has woken up massively. A brace for him today. Dubois was back in the midfield and spraying balls around for loveliness, which was really nice to see. Uh, Celso and uh, Jesperson had good games as well. But also, Sean Lancaster, once again, comes off the bench, scores himself an assist. He really does like a bench assist. Uh, I've played him from the start in one game and he just didn't seem to do it. I don't I don't know what it is about him coming off the bench and getting good goals, but the man can do it, and it's good to see. Lever was also excellent and set up the first goal, too, with a header. He won a header. He just seems to have a habit of winning headers, despite not being super tall. In fact, he's 5'7". He shouldn't be winning headers against anyone, but he does. Still, I think we're a little bit fortunate in this game. Palace still created a couple of chances. And the one thing I was complaining about in the last episode was how, all of a sudden, tight marking a striker now seems that they literally will not leave him even if there's more danger elsewhere. So I decided for these off-camera games that I would turn off the tight marking of the strikers in our opposition instructions. Made no difference. They still tight mark the striker even when there's a opposition player basically running clean through on goal, even though you could just walk across and block the run. I don't know why. Even with that turned off, they are still refusing to go and close down the danger. It's a weird one. And then in the next game, away at Bournemouth, this was a very strange match. They scored directly from the kickoff. The ball was put out wide, lumped into the box. Tammy Abraham won a header. Brilliant header. 1-0 within like 22 seconds, I think it was. But then we got level through Jose Larson Guerra, of course. Who else? Uh, and then Nikolai Jesperson gave us the lead just after half time from a corner before uh, Guerra put a free kick in for him then. And he made it 3-1 just out of nowhere. We barely scored any set piece goals this season. And then bam, two in one game like this. Great uh, play for Guerra though. Two goals and two assists on the night. What a performance. He set up both of Jesperson's goals and obviously he scored both of his. And well, I put Sean Lancaster on in this one to see if he could do anything, but he couldn't quite manage it. But still, excellent performance again from Dubois in the midfield. Stepanek was having a good day. Uh, Yehuda Gola, who's got the highest number of key passes in the league at like 29, because uh, he's phenomenal, then scored a direct free kick against us. He had a great game as well, but it wasn't enough. We got an away win and a good performance as well, I'd have to say. Really solid performance away at Bournemouth. But what I would also say is that this is the most galling game I've seen for ages, whereby every time they got the ball, they could just run directly through us, no matter who it was in front of them. And I want to show you the first goal that we scored. I think it was Stepanek's assist for Guerra, because it's the way their player has the ball beforehand. I'm like, what? So I'm going to show you this now. Okay, so watch when Luna gets the ball here, and watch our player that is supposed to be tackling him. Watch how long he's able to hold onto the ball for some reason. So our player's there. Here he comes. Got to put the tackle in. No, no, he's... he's 
what is he doing? How is he not able to win the ball in that situation? I was livid, but luckily we did actually then go and score from directly from that. But my God, it was, it's really frustrating to see that. And then unfortunately we went and lost 1-0 away at Arsenal. They scored a goal from a corner in the 78th minute. They were the better side. We couldn't really create much. I started Sean Lancaster and he just couldn't do it for us. Um, we held them at, at, nil, at half time. It was 0-0 nil -nil, and they'd only had like two shots, but the second half they just kind of kicked on, pushed through us and got a 1-0. One, one, uh, they have a Jean Carlos and we have a Jean Carlos. Spider-Man.png. And all of that leaves us seventh. So we're still right where we want to be, but we have lost four of our first nine and won the other five. So that's kind of helped us, I suppose. Uh, Tottenham scoring a lot of goals. They beat Nottingham Forest 7-0. Uh, Forest are not looking good at the moment, it would be fair to say. But Guerra now is six goals in the league, is on there on the top scorer record. So that, that's a good sign. He seems to have woken up now, which is nice. We're still right in contention, which again is where we want to be. Uh, we want to be battling for that sort of fifth, sixth, seventh kind of spot. And we are on for it, but we too many defeats in there. Um, against Arsenal, I think we deserve to lose. Spurs, we definitely deserve to lose. Watford and Man City games were a bit iffy, but that's life sometimes. And I think we're a bit fortunate against Palace, so mm, kind of balances out. Mike Phelan is actually managing West Ham now, interestingly. But they are struggling. They've won one of their first nine matches. Let's bear that in mind before we go into today's game. So Santana's out, unfortunately, which is a shame. Uh, we'll have a huge shuffle around here. So Alberto is back. Thank God for that. Uh, I don't really want Chitiu at right back. I'd rather have Hugo Fernandez uh, because he's just better against these kind of teams. Gerd is in good form. Lever, I, I can take him or Lever uh, at the moment. As for the midfield, um, Silla played the last game, but he was a little bit lacking. But I still trust him more than Asman, who just has not been able to perform this season, unfortunately. Um, Dubois has come in and done a solid job. He really is spraying balls around and he's such a useful member of that midfield. Silla, I feel like, is the best bet alongside him. Um, because, I don't know, Asman just doesn't seem to be... I don't know, something about him. He just doesn't seem to quite fit with things. I also switched over the uh, corner centre-backs to provide more chances for Celso. And ironically, Jesperson's the one that scored all the goals since then. We're a little bit light on players. Even our backup goalkeeper's now injured. So but we do have Kyle Gooch, though, one of the youngsters. So that's not too bad. He's actually wanted by someone, interestingly. Who's he wanted by? Luton Town. Well, they want... Mm, okay. So Griffiths Perrier, who's wanted by someone as well. Inter. Okay, interesting. Um, Asman and Pepo, Chitiu, Lancaster and Troffin. Lancaster seems much better as a super sub. For whatever reason, against tired legs, he really does seem to have something. Hopefully having the correct defensive lineup back now should stabilise things a little bit. I think part of the reason they were getting so beaten possibly could have been because we were playing, having to play people out of position on their wrong foot at left back. And as a result, it was allowing a bit more space for the right wing. But now we've got Alberto back. Things should be stable now. But hopefully we can change that with a win today. It's good to see Gerda back in form. I think that fills me with a lot of confidence. Having... A lot of the first choice players back is certainly helpful. I think Lever is more effective when he's got Alberto outside of him. Because he actually does provide space for Alberto more so than Santana. Lever is that inside forward. Just, he creates a chasm. Stepanek. I'm going to bring Lancaster on in the second half if Stepanek's poor. Please don't shoot. Oh my god. Oh, oh well, I mean, he shouldn't be shooting from there. But he just, the reason Lancaster has more assists is because he doesn't do that. That's quite simply the reason. He gets into good positions and he finds crosses. Oh, that was a weird camera angle. Stepanek here, like Gerda's bombing into the box. There's three or four players in the box here. There's actually, right, th there's four, five other players that he could try to just flash a ball to at some point. But he never does. Even if he just checks back inside or just try to find someone. Like, he's got super lucky here that the goalkeeper has made an absolute meal of that. It's 1-0 to Knox County. I know I'm complaining about us scoring a goal, but like so rarely does that actually end up going in. It's actually worse than last season, despite us playing way less matches. It's actually quite impressive just how many injuries we're getting. Here we go. Go on, grab one from a set piece to really stamp this game down. Yes, but so what a save that is from Radu. Bloody hell. Stepanek again. Finds Dubois. That's more like it. Oh, yes, that's a great ball. Dubois absolutely skinned him here and Stepanek it again. Oh, beautiful. Okay. Do you remember last season when I massively criticised him in a game and then he came up immediately with a goal? The first one I can criticise him for, I've got to say. This is wonderful from Remy Dubois, though. That is why he's in the team. Balls like that. But Stepanek still has an awful lot of work to do. But again, it just kind of feels like most times these goals are not going to go in. But today, he's come up with a brace. Brilliant. Like I, I cannot criticise him for scoring two goals in the first 20 minutes here. He's stepped up for us today. And... I'd like to think that's the first two steps on us potentially winning this match. Oh, God, don't immediately, because it equalizes. Oh, for goodness sake. It's not an equalizer, of course, but... It... I... <clears throat> Fernandez gets dragged out. Solanke puts it through him, but I'm still thinking, okay, we're in a good position here. Jesperson gets in front of him. He's literally get... Uh, he... What? Shuffle around, find your positions. Dubois, lever. Very, very deep. Don't you muck this up. That's a great ball. Well played. Alberto. Got to dig someone out here. Please. Ball in Stepanek. 
Oh, that was a good chance. That was a tough one, but a good one. All in all, pretty pleased with the way this first half's gone so far, really. Two goals up, dominating most of it, uh, and doing a pretty good job. Bad defending for the Rob Brain goal, and I do hate that, but sometimes that's just going to happen, unfortunately. It was a really bad mistake from Jesperson. I know it's not counted as a mistake, but to me, it's a mistake. He's in front of the guy, and it just comes straight through his body. Okay. Second half seems to have started pretty strongly for us again. Possession's still a little bit on the low side, but what can you do? Fernandez finds Asman. He's going to shoot. Doesn't, actually. Dubois might leave her. Keep that ball moving. Stepanek, he'll probably shoot. And he would deserve to. He is absolutely on fire today. That might well be his first ever hat-trick for Notts County. I genuinely don't think Thomas Stefanek has ever scored a hat-trick for us. Darren Lever with the assist. And credit to him, because this is actually not bad play. He keeps hold of the ball, provides a bit of an overlap, and then Stefanek just goes straight around his man, admittedly with a dribble as well. Bad goalkeeping from Radu, and it is 3-1 to Notts County now. Thomas Stefanek, hat-trick. Well played. This game's not done yet, though. 3-1 is a... Oh, and Garrett nearly wins it. Cook. And... Oh, you've got to be joking. Man, what a mistake. Guerra, thunderous effort at the goal. Uh, there's just a few little things that I wish we could clear up. And I feel like if we had less injuries, we probably would have been able to do so. But we're doing all right for now. Asman, I think Lever is definitely starting to come into his own in that role now. Asman, can he find a cross? I think he can. Oh, Jean Carlos makes it 4-1 of the 90th minute there. Really nice play. Second of the year for him. I definitely think he's improved this season. I don't think he got that many for us at all last season. And he's definitely looked a better player now he's in that role. Asman, look at that. I mean, the defender probably could have done a bit better there. But just holds onto the ball, whips it across. And pff, it's awkward as hell header. He sort of turtled himself there. Ah, takes it out of play. Newcastle 4-1 up against Forest. That's not going to bode well for when we play them, is it? Oh, dear. Great performance. Notts County 4, West Ham 1. A hat-trick from Stepanek and one late one from Jean Carlos. Really good performance. Uh, Guerra didn't really do a great deal. West Ham didn't really do a great deal either. We basically gave them their goal and their best chance of the match. But regardless, a 4-1 victory is exactly what we needed there. Right, let's go on to Bristol City. Rest a few players and try some people out. Lancaster's definitely starting. Right, we're back. Time for a little bit of a break. Some League Cup action. Also, Stepanek's decided that he no longer wants a new deal. So that's kind of nice. He's determined to get back in my good books today. Hat-trick and now that. Thomas? You're firmly back in it. Not starting you today, though. We need to rest you. Today, I'm going to do what I've done in the Carabao Cup, which is actually play the more aggressive approach to our tactic, just to see how it works out. But we want to do a team selection anyway, and then shuffle stuff around beyond that, because I want to be starting Costel Trophin for you guys to be able to see that. And obviously, I feel like it's very important that uh, Ricky Griffiths gets a game here. It's frustrating, but that's just the way it's got to be. Defenders will swap them around as well. Gael Perrier will come in, and so will Andriyashenko. As far as our midfield goes, we actually have no choice, really. Uh, because we're missing two of our four midfielders. Okay, so, you know, mostly rotated in some areas where we can. Uh, I wish we could rotate more, in all honesty. Kristoff. That's a good ball for Lampro, actually. Fernandez is going to get a bit caught out here. Andrea Schenko, nice work. Asman. Over the top. Costel Troffin's in! Yes, Costel Troffin! Notts County have the lead at Ashton Gate. Costel Troffin's first goal of the year. By the way, what an unbelievable pass from Paolo Asman. I know it's the uh, EFL Cup, but I'm really, really pleased for Costel Troffin. Just looks up. Troffin's made a lovely run through the middle. I thought he was going to muck this up, but actually very, very composed for him to go around the goalkeeper. Cheeky, number 69, puts it in the back of the net. His first of the year. I'm so happy for him. No one really has, though. Not just yet, anyway. Fernandez does well. Really well. Really well. Whoa! Hugo Fernandez makes it Notts County 2. That is some goal. Is that his first? Yep, his first ever goal for Notts County. Comes while playing out of position. At right. Look at this. This is kind of what I mean again with the dribbling though, but still. He gets all the way through it. They just back off and back off and back off. And he's hit it with his left foot in off the post. Brilliant goal. And that was a very unlikely goal scorer. They're backing off here. Lancaster's won it. Griffiths has got it. Costa Trofin. Oh, and a great save by Ristov. And well... Costel Troffin is having a lovely time out there today. Be exactly what I want. Plus, with City and Chelsea playing each other, that would be one less of those guys to worry about. Lever! Good strike. The less of the big boys left in the competition, the better. Luton are going through at the moment, as are Leicester at Lancaster. Go on, Sean. Pulls it across for Darren Lever. Sean Lancaster. He just knows how to put that ball in the box. Darren Lever, lovely work arriving as the inside forward at the back post. I know it's under the championship team, but still, it's nice to see that we've got that capability. Asman again, lovely ball in here for Sean Lancaster. Gets a bit fortunate with the bounce there, but again, Stepanek drives forward and shoots there. But that is a gorgeous ball in, and Lever thrashes it in the back of the net. Stepanek would have run here, then run towards the goal, and just hit it straight into the post. I don't know why Lancaster is able to do that, and he's not. Lancaster again. Chitiu. Ball whipped in. Gera's header can't quite get there. Let's get this ball whipped back across, though. We've got nobody in our half at all now, apart from the keeper. Gera, coming on the left-hand side for a bit. Griffiths. Lovely ball for Fernandez. Gonna have to check back, though. 
Dinks it in, and Asman! Oh, it's in the back of the net, it's 4-0. Paolo Asman now with his first goal of the season. Um, he's not scored many for us last year. That was a really good moment for him. We're getting a lot of headers today. Also, Hugo Fernandez, once again, absolute joy. Playing out on the other side. I think he actually uses his left foot this time. Um, nope, back to his right. Asman gets in there. Bad goalkeeping, bad defending, 4-0. Bristol City nil, Notts County 4 in the Carabao Cup. A really good performance when we really needed it away from home we scored four goals in both of today's games Troffin, Fernandez, Lever and Asman with the goals today man of the match for Paolo Asman with a goal and an assist but really there was nobody that actually played that badly today rotated team did an excellent job hugely pleased for them and now we've got a little bit of a slightly easier run you'd feel so I might come back and do Leicester and Villa because I'm preparing for the Forest Derby match soon that, that's the massive one. And I think that'll be a live comment in the next episode after that. Because that'll be a bit too many to do off camera. So we're going to come back and do Aston Villa and Leicester at home. We've got Brighton and West Brom in there. Liverpool away next is almost certainly going to be a defeat. But you never know. Um, I really do want to try and come up with a, an away approach. But I want to do it in a live comm game. So that you guys can see what we're doing specifically. Uh, so I'm just going to play the normal approach against Liverpool. But Brighton away. They're not an easy team to play against. But then Villa and West Brom at home. We've actually got four consecutive Premier League home games in there. That might be a really good run for us if we can get our act together. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this episode, and I really hope you have, drop a like. That is spectacular. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, and I'll join you guys soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye. And as always, hold your gun, Capybara. God damn it. I nearly forgot to say it. That would have been dreadful. See you guys soon. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.